Hi, I'm Ellie from Illegal Art Photography and I want to do a quick tutorial to tell you all about how to use your PicTime gallery. Um, I did a gallery tutorial for when I used a different provider and I think people found it really useful. So I thought it'd be good to kind of do one for PicTime. Um, it's got some really amazing inbuilt features. So what I'm going to do is give you an overview in this tutorial and then do two separate tutorials one for looking at the kind of the products that are available in the store and one that's a more detailed in tutorial for how to create a magazine style album which you can design and create and order yourself um, and a really good kind of low-cost alternative to the other albums that I sell. Um, so first of all I'm going to kind of start by showing you how to use the gallery. Um, so assuming that you are one of my clients and I've photographed your wedding or a portrait session for you, you will receive an invitation to your gallery which will look something like this. So this is actually my personal um, Gmail account, so you can ignore the amount of unread messages, they're mostly marketing ones. Um, so you will get an invitation to view the gallery that looks a little bit like this, loads and loads of information um, I want you to know. Um, and then all you need to do in order to view it is just click view gallery. And by magic, it should appear. So the first time you log in, you'll be asked to create a password. So it recognises your email address and it'll ask you to create a password. The reason for this is because there are certain permissions associated with the email that you've received the email to. So for instance, if you are the bride or groom and you've received an email, you will have special permissions related to your email address. That's why you need to create a password. So I'm just gonna pop one in here and then click enter gallery. Do I want Google to save it? Let's go, never. Okay, so this is just a test gallery. This is um, my best of 2017 images. Um, and what you'll have, um, usually, so I've put getting ready. Actually, what I can do as, a, as the photographer is put a number of different sort of scenes in the weddings. So it might be getting ready, ceremony, uh, the drinks reception, the portraits, the group photos, so you can divide the day up by that. And in that case, that will appear here as a little drop down menu, so you can kind of jump easily from bits of the day. As it is, I've only got kind of a hundred odd images here. This is my, as I said, my best of 2017 blog post. And you can see the way it's displayed, it looks rather lovely. Some images are automatically bigger than others. But what I can do is decide that that image maybe isn't as important as, say, this image. And so I can make that one bigger. So I can go through and control and customise the look of the gallery that way. So that's controlling and customising my view. I can also decide if there's images that I want to hide for whatever reason. It might be that you think there's something inappropriate there or you don't want to share it with everyone. That's absolutely fine, I understand. Um, so what you need to do is just go click to hide from guest and then that will kind of vanish. Um, and then when you come to share the gallery, it won't be in the gallery. So I might decide to hide that one as well. And there we go. So the hidden photos now go to their own gallery here. So only the person that's logged in with the email address that's on the initial email invite can log in and see those. Everyone else can't. So anyway, let's go back to the gallery. So um, we have a couple of other features kind of built in. So in each photo we have the opportunity to favourite it, to email it, to share it on Facebook or to download it. Um, so we can choose to do that with any single image in the gallery. Um, if you click email, it will go and be saved up here. So you can basically click and create a little short list of photos that you want to email. And then go to share photos. You've created a little collection there and you can add an email. So for instance, you might want to email some of your favourite photos the day, from the day to your mum. All you need to do is add in her email there and then you can share just those four favourites that you've wanted to share with her. Um, again, with friends, you might have a couple of great images of them. So you can set, click the email icon on each of those images, create that little collection, and then email that directly to your friends so that they see the four images of them. So you don't need to share the entire gallery with them. Um, alternatively, if you want to share the full gallery with people, which I would very much encourage, then you can do. So all you need to do is go to share gallery link, um, and then you can either share it via email, you can share it via Facebook, or you can get link. Um, so those things are fairly self-explanatory. 
Um, get link's probably the easiest because all you need to do then is copy it, paste it, and then you can pop it into an email, you can pop it on your own Facebook page, you can share it wherever you want to. And then basically guests will get the guest views, that's with the images hidden, the larger images that you've highlighted, um, and you can really customise the view that those people have of the gallery. It's really important <clears throat> that if you are sending the gallery to guests that you do send it through these sharing functions. That is, as I've said, so that you can control what they can see, but also because you can then control the download permissions. Um, so you have the ability to download high resolution images embedded into the permissions of your email address. So you might only want your guests to download low resolution images so that they can put them on Facebook or use them as their social media profiles. Um, and by doing this, you'll enable that to happen. So they're all the lovely ways that you can share the gallery. Um, let's just click on download. So again, if we want to create a little short list of images to download, we can click the download button and they will all be collected here. And I've got options. So I can see the three images I've selected for download. I can download high resolution photos or down, download web size photos. So that really depends on how I want to use them. If you want to make your own prints, click high resolution download. If you want to share them on Instagram or Facebook or blog them or whatever you want to do, click download web size photos because otherwise they'll be too big for those um, services to sort of crunch and it can make everything look a bit pixely. So let's say I want to click download high resolution photos. I'll just click that and it provides me with a zip file so I literally just can zip it and click it. I can also download them to Dropbox so if that's a service that you use and you want to share them that way um, then you can do. Um, that can be really good if you've got multiple computers or if you are using an iPad in lieu of a computer you can download them to your Dropbox and you can still view them that way and then again you can share them um, if you want to. So it's really easy to kind of manage the way that you use the photos. I'm just going to go back to the gallery and see if there's anything else amazing that I've forgotten. Oh, likes. So again, on each photo, we've got the options to like them. So we can create a series of favourites. So that's really useful if we want to create a short list of images, again, either to send to a guest or a member of the family, or to, for instance, uh, create an album, or you might want to send a short list of favourites to me so that I can then go through and design an album or some other sequence of something for you. So again, you can just click the hearts on the images, Da -da. Let's, I've just done those four just for ease and again so you'll see the number of likes that you have you can go and review those likes so if you decide oh actually do you know what I don't like that one you just click it and it comes out of the selection um, and at that point then I can download just the images that I like so there's loads of different ways to kind of create short lists and to control the view of the images if you decide that you want to download everything <clears throat> then all you need to do Let's just un-deselect those images for download and then just go to the thing. I've got then the option, if I've got no specific images flagged for download, then I can just download all the photos. So I can either download them all high res or download them all web size. Um, and then again, it just reiterates to select specific photos, click on the download icon on the photo. Okay, uh, that's a really quick overview. I'm just going to click in here so you can see again, you can just scroll through your images, uh, you can view everything this way. So it's a really nice way to see everything and you can see it moves really quickly, looks great, really easy to share and I'm really in love with it. Um, have a look at the next couple of tutorials I'm going to do. I'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about the shop because there are loads of really lovely functions in there and it makes it very easy to kind of visualise the products that you might want to buy and I'll touch on also the designing the magazine style album. Okay, thanks for now, um, and I hope you found this tutorial useful. Let me know if you want to know any more, and I will catch up with you next time.